Hello again everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another Throwback Thursday. Today we're going to be playing one of my all-time favorite games, if not the favorite game I've ever played. And that's the NES Castlevania. Of course we're playing it on the PS4 because the Konami collection, but... I don't remember if I remember the first time I played it, but I can remember when I played it very early on. On Saturdays, Granny would go to grocery store and buy groceries and run errands around town. And sometimes on a Saturday, we would stay out late and we'd get to eat supper while we were still in town. At this pizza joint, in the town where we went shopping, they had a sit-down arcade cabinet, and on it was this game, Castlevania. And I fell in love with it immediately. And it was kind of hard to find a copy when it was released on the NES, and my neighbor had already gotten Castlevania 2, and we had beaten it before I ever even got this game. I actually got it just before going back to school one year. I remember because Dad had promised me, since he couldn't find it at Christmas because I wanted it for Christmas, he promised me, he said, if you find it any other time, I will buy it for you. And sure enough, he did. And a lifelong love affair has continued on. I just absolutely love everything about this game. The music, the graphics, I mean you can tell what everything is even though it's, you know, 8-bit graphics. The music is great. Uh, my buddy Clark Kent, Triple Zero, I don't know if you if any of y'all that watch this will have heard of his channel, but he's doing some throwback thro Thursdays. He played Mega Man, he was talking about the music. I would put this music up against any other game. Certainly the series music is, is, is as iconic as just about anything out there. So the basic premise of this game, we're going into Dracula's castle, and we're going to be fighting his minions to try to take out Dracula and erase the curse on the land. And the bad guys in in the game are basic, basically your universal movie monsters. I don't think there was a giant bat, so that one doesn't quite fall into it. At the end of stage three, you've got mummies. Stage four is Frankenstein. Um, of course, Dracula himself. The fish men. They always remind me of the creature from the Black Lagoon. Oddly enough, no wolf men in this game. They do show up in the second one, Simon's Quest. Going back just a minute to uh, playing that game and playing this game in the pizza joint. Granny always uh, had a little change bag in her in her purse, and she called it my money. And I always had quarters in my money bag, so Granny really took care of me there. back in my uh, coin-operated days. Now, the boss at the end of this stage, I've never really understood <laughs> how it made the cut. Uh, it's just, uh, it's not your typical movie monster. I mean, yeah, 
monster from from mythical times, I guess. So in that in that respect, she makes the cut. Um, so the end boss here is Medusa, and I'm going to play this game like I play it generally. I'm playing to win. Imagine that. Me playing to win a game. I gotta do that with every game so I can win some. These flying Medusa heads were always a pain in my youth. So all we're going to do, we're going to use the holy water and freezer in place. And you can whip in between if you want to and take her out a little bit quicker. Now this next stage, stage three, is the stage that I will have the perhaps the hardest time as a stage overall. Now there is a stage on the final level, the, the first stage of the final level. I mean it's always a crapshoot. This one has birds and the birds can be somewhat erratic. I want to take this guy out. Yep, that's what I wanted. That'll work too. Alright, we want this axe. So we can get the... I always called it a boomerang. It's in the shape of a cross, I guess. Technically, it's more of an X than a cross. So we're doing pretty good on our health. Sometimes those birds have whittled me down a little bit more than that. I don't know why I decided to get that. Oh! That was a mistake. And again, I'm not going to take a chance on these birds. I'm going with this bad boy do its thing. And depending on how much health we have when we get to the mummies, we may do a trick to take them out a little bit quicker. There's actually two mummies, so. And if you jump at the right time, you can take out those birds before they attack. That second skeleton can sometimes be a bit of a pain. You want to camp right here where that Medusa head kind of went under the stones? And that's where you want to camp right there. And use the crosses to take out that other one. Alright, so how are we going to do this? Oh, it ain't going to work. Yeah, we still took him out pretty good. If you can get them overlaid on each other, you can wipe them out almost immediately. I don't know how to manipulate them to where they want to, where they need to be. Now we're in the catacombs. We'll make our way to fight the Frankenstein's monster. And he's not by himself. No, no. He will have Igor with him. Hmm. 
I always go to the front of this because you don't want to take a hit and bounce off the back. And historically, this is probably the boss that I've had the most trouble with in the game. Because he can be either a nightmare or a cakewalk, depending on your loadout. Here I am flapping my gums. I ain't even gonna make it to him. I don't know if you saw that one of these hunchbacks. These are hunchbacks, by the way. I didn't introduce those. Um, these hunchbacks will drop an axe, and one of them dropped it earlier. That's the only lookout on this section, is that you don't pick up another weapon. You want to keep the holy water. Perhaps the uh, most powerful sub-weapon in the game. Simply because it freezes the enemies. I mean, as far as strength-wise, the cross is probably better. Boomerang. Whatever. You see, it froze it in place. Now we're back to full health. That's good. There we go. Alright. So Igor is basically just a hunchback that shoots fireballs. And he's what makes this fight a nightmare. If you don't take him out of the fight, then it, it becomes really hard. Frankenstein just moves forward and back. And if he touches you, he hits you. It's the fireballs and the jumping around thing. And each hit takes four energy bar so you can take four hits total which means I'm down to three hits before I die that's where the holy water comes in we're not gonna let him move off his starting spot and maybe I'll do a playthrough at some point and show you what it's like to fight him otherwise but we're doing a fun run this time, not a challenge run. This next stage has one of the iconic boss characters in all of Castlevania. And that's because it is death personified. That's right, we get to literally fight death in this game. And he is actually harder than Frankenstein. But I was able to consistently beat him quicker than I was Frankenstein's monster. Because I had a lot of trouble getting past Frankenstein. Oh, those red skeletons back there come back to life. I don't know if you noticed. And every enemy on this stage gives you a, a, a four health deduction on your life bar. And again, we want to keep our holy water, so we want to stay clear of any other sub weapons. But if we do happen to get another one, we want it to be the, the cross. We'll wait for that axe to disappear. Pretty sure the programmers had to have known that holy water was the way to go to beat death. Because the only place to pick up holy water, unless the enemy drops it, which I'm not even sure I've ever seen, is at the first little section. 
we didn't see it because I already had it, but had I had it, you would have seen where it was. Right after the first two hunchbacks. Something that I've learned fairly recently on those axe armors. I just killed. If you hit them with the holy water, you can walk right through them without taking any kind of damage, which is handy dandy. But I'm playing it the way I have played it all my life. I'm in trouble. Whew. Which is to hit them with holy water and destroy them. I don't know why Dracula doesn't just fill up his castle with the red skeletons, because while they're fairly weak, you can't kill them. Yeah, I was getting hit either way. Oh, goodness. Alright. Here we are, we're at death. He's gonna come down right on this platform right above us right here. So what we're gonna do, same thing we did on Frankenstein's monster. We're not gonna let him get out of the starting gates. Sometimes on these early Nintendo games, you had to learn how to cheese things, because, man, he's difficult. He has little flying sickles start appearing on the screen, and they go random directions and try to kill you. And when you can only take four hits or two with the position I put myself in there, it makes it a little bit harder. Alright, so this stage is the other stage I was talking about earlier. This is the one that is probably the most... This segment is the most difficult. With stage 2 overall being the hardest. Just because of the birds. This has got bats in place of birds. And it's this guy right here that always gets me. Oh, he didn't do it. He didn't do it. It's a Festivus miracle. I don't trust him. That's why I didn't trust him. I should have froze time. Should have froze time or kept going. I knew he was going to dart out and get me, though. One of them always does. As long as I've played this game, and I have played this game every year of my life, since the year before I got it. I have never figured out how to get around that. This one's easy. You just freeze time. This one you can freeze by hitting him. But man, that, was that first one and then that second one. And there might be a way to manipulate them. I maybe should go watch some speedrunners to figure that out. Ooh. And if I'm being honest, we'll be lucky to get past this next section. Come on. Oh, you're not coming, are you? Let's see, we've got eight, so that means we can pause time right now. That'll help. Crap. Almost didn't figure that out in time. Oh, goodness. All right. Well, we made it through it. 
great thing about this game, once you go through that door, if you die, you start right here. So the developers did take some mercy on you. Because Dracula, man, Dracula can be a tough fight. We'll go ahead and pick up our favorite holy water. So what we're going to do here. He'll raise that cape and let loose three fireballs. If you jump early, he will shoot them upwards. Or at an upwards diagonal. And you got to hit him in the head. And you can only hit him in the head. And if he appears on top of you, it will hit you. I mean, this music. Let's get back to the music for a second. This is beautiful. It's just building tension. <laughs> it's great. Alright, three more hits. Three more hits. I know what you're asking. Joe, why'd you say this was difficult? This is why. He's got a second form. Look at it! He's a giant bat! Thankfully, the holy water will freeze him in place. We might pull this off, y'all. We might pull this off. I cannot believe I did that. I cannot believe I did that with one hit. I cannot believe I pulled that off with one hit. Wow. I'm getting chills right now because that's that's something that's pretty pretty hard to pull off. And that's it. That's uh that's Castlevania, my favorite game. And now we're gonna see why I said it's like the Universal Movie Monsters. They've got Christopher B. instead of Christopher Lee playing Dracula. You got Death played by Bela Lugosi. And Boris Karloff is playing Frankenstein. Love Cheney Jr. instead of Lon Cheney Jr. Then you got Love Cheney instead of Lon Cheney. I mean, this is just... It's great. It's great. I mean, a lot of early Nintendo games took inspiration from other things. And Konami really hit it out of the ballpark with this game. I absolutely love it. I hope you've enjoyed going down this uh, memorable ride with me. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed it. We'll definitely be playing some more Castlevania on some Throwback Thursdays. Um, I just I can't express how much this game means to me. You know, just the relationship it has with early memories with my granny and and dad getting it for me for a very late Christmas present. The music, the graphics, the horror element, which kind of still fits the theme of the channel that we have going on right now. I just, I just love everything about it. It's a beautiful game. I hope you all get a chance to try it out. Um, if you liked it, please hit like, subscribe, leave your comments down below. And I want to thank you all for watching, and you all have a good night.